Russian people, we see that they were going through this transition where they had, Paul had started this church. And in this church, the people were doing really well. Paul was so amazed at their faith and how excited they were about God. And the thing that, am that amazed him was he didn't spend a lot of time with them. Uh, and in spite of not spending a lot of time with them, he was amazed how they had consumed the word of God and how they stayed faithful in spite of having a leader there to teach them. We see Timothy had passed through teaching and, and others that came by and they taught, but they didn't have a pastor there to really teach them, but they stood faithful in spite of that. And he felt bad about it, but he was encouraged because of the simple fact of them being so diligent in spite of having a leader. And that kind of stands out to me because for so long we get tied up and tangled up into having to looking up to the leader. And if we're not careful, you get so caught up in the leader that you're not looking at God. And we have to understand that the leader is not God. But God is working through the leader. Amen? Amen. The leader is a man or a woman. They can make a mistake, but God never makes a mistake. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we look at this, and, and, and I'm excited because now he's writing this letter to them to encourage them. And he wants to bring out some other things in them uh, so that they can understand because he wants to make sure that their faith does not waver. And I love this about Paul. That in spite of what, in spite of the situation that he's going through, he always remembers the needs and the concerns of the people. He always puts the people before himself. And that is a good sign of a good leader. Amen? Amen. So let's look at that sixth verse. He says, so then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him rooted and built up in him, Amen. strengthened in faith as you were taught and overflowing with thanksgiving. When I look at this, this really, really moves me because I like the fact that he helps them to understand that life is difficult and situations in your life uh, comes up every day. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes it seems like trouble on every side. But in spite of what you go through in life, he encourages them to stay rooted. He says, stay built up in Jesus Christ. How do you stay built up in Jesus Christ? Amen. Stay prayed up. Keep reading the word of God. What else? Faithful. Be faithful. Thankful. Thankful. What else? Obedient. Be obedient. We must continue to do all of these things so that we can be built up. Because the adversary, which is the devil, is always looking for a way to attack us. But if I'm built up in Jesus Christ, when the enemy comes, he can't touch me because I'm built up in Jesus. Amen? Amen? Have you ever gone through a storm and God gives you a song in the middle of a storm? Yes. Yes. Have you ever gone through a trial and a situation in your life and, 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 and you start thinking about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you? When others are crying and other people are getting upset, you're smiling because you know without a shadow of a doubt that God is going to make a way out of nowhere. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we have to, he says, stay rooted. <clears throat> he says, be built up in Christ. Strengthened in faith as you were taught. Overflowing with faith, with thankfulness. Overflowing with thankfulness. Amen. Don't just thank him for 
bring you out, bring you out. Don't just thank him for the car. Don't thank him for the house. But thank him for the trials. Because it's the trials that make you strong. Don't just thank him for, 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 for the job that he's given you. Thank him for the times that when you did not know how you were going to pay the bills, he made a way out of nowhere. Amen. Because it's the trials that strengthens my faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he, 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 what he does here is like, it's almost like exercise. It's like going to a gym and working out. Yes, and, sir. and the more that you work out, the stronger you get. Yes, sir. He, he, he's telling you, if you're going to be a Christian, you got to go to the gym and work out. Yes, sir. Because you're not going to get the results that you want if you don't work out. Yes, sir. A lot of us want to lose weight. A lot of us want to be strong. I want to look like my son. My son is all ripped up and all cut up. I want to look like him. But the problem is I keep looking. I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> Amen? But, but to become strong like him and to look like him, i got to go to the gym and work out. Amen? Amen? Amen. If you want to be a strong Christian, we got to go through some things. Yes. Amen? Yes. We're going to have some storms. But thank God for the storms because it's the storms that strengthen our faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. He says, see, see to it. Not, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of the world, rather than on Christ. Now look at this. He, 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 he protects them by saying, be careful of philosophers. He says, I don't have a problem with philosophy, but I, I have a problem with philosophers that teach philosophy about human and not spiritual things. Because if I if I take in the philosophy that it's that teaches me about what man can do for me, then what happens is then I begin to depend on what man can do for me. That means that when I go through the storm, I'm not going to look for Jesus Christ to bring me through. I'm going to look for man to bring me through. So he says, be careful with these philosophies that that man will teach you about human traditions. He says, but make sure that you are taught about Christ. He yes, says sir. here, he says, who is the head over every power and authority. In him, you will also be circumcised in putting off the sinful nature. Yes, Not sir. with the circumcision done by hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. We love this. Amen. What is he saying to us? What is he saying to us right here? Could anybody just take a stab at it? Well, similar to what uh, something that we were talking about last night when we were talking about, excuse me, about the circumcision of the heart. You know, um, uh, the Israelites, you know, thought when they circumcised the flesh that that, that would make them holy or whatever. But what Paul is saying here, we need to cut away that, that anger in the heart and that hatred in the heart. Cut away do a circumcision of our heart and every excess weight that, that keeps us separated from Christ. Cut away that, yes, yes, you know, yes, instead yes. of worrying about, you know, the flesh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because we have this sinful nature that, that we carry. Some of us go to church and we carry this sinful nature. We come to church and we leave the church with the same sinful nature. And you go to work with the same, same sinful nature. And you go home with the same sinful nature. And you don't understand why things don't change in your life. It's not going to change until God cuts away the old nature. Until he does that circumcision of the heart. Until he does this change in your life. You will always be the same person. You will always react to the same situations the same way. 
until Christ does a circumcision in your life, until he takes that sinful nature away. I don't know how to speak to people if I'm carrying a sinful nature. I don't know how to love if I carry this sinful nature. I don't know how to forgive if I'm carrying this sinful nature. But if I allow God to do this circumcision, to do this operation, to do this change in my life, it's easy for me to love people. It's easy for me to have joy in the midst of a storm. It's easy for me to know that God will make a way out of no way when trials and tribulations come. But it has to be a circumcision or a change in your life. Amen? Amen. It has to be. There's no way that you can serve God in a sinful nature. I must ask God to crucify my flesh daily. Because my flesh is always telling me, I don't want to get up this morning and go to church. My flesh is always going to tell me, I ain't lifting my hands. I'm tired. I've been working all night long. I don't feel like praising God. My sinful nation is going to tell me, you know what? After what she did to me, I'll never forgive her. But the change in my life, when I become a new creature in Christ, when all things are passed away and behold, all things become new, I don't have a problem praising God because I know that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the grace or mercy of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And there has to be a change in your life. So what is he saying? He says, I don't want you to be fooled by the philosophies of man. That's what Deke is talking about. This, this manly circumcision. He says, don't don't be, don't be fooled by that manly uh, 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 philosophy, those traditions. He says, I want you to know that in order for you to take off the old and put on the new, there must be a circumcision in your life. Make sense? Yes. Amen. Can I have somebody to help me read, please? Verse 9 through 12. Verse 11, up to verse 11. Excuse me? You read up to verse oh, okay. Could, could somebody read 11 to, to 13? Okay. When you are dead in your sins and the, and the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with his regulations that was against us and that stood, up, that stood opposed to us. He took it away. Nailing it to the cross and having disarmed powers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Mm. Wow. Let, let's take that piece by piece. Can I have somebody explain that to me? Anybody want to take a, a stab at that? Okay, let's, let's take it piece by piece. Let's start from, in him you were also circumcised in putting off the sinful nature, not with circumcision but done of, of hands of men, but the circumcision, circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith and power of God who raised him from the dead, Verse 13, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, when you were dead in your sins, what did you do when you were dead in your sins? How did you act when you were in dead in your sins? You were worthy. So when you, so when you died with Christ, right, what happened? You made your life. You stopped doing worthy things. You, you, you're supposed to stop. Yes. When you rose with him, what did you do? Became a new. Became a new. You became a new person, right? Yes. Okay. God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us for all of our sins. Not only was I alive when I rose with him, 
But what happened, was he forgave me for all of my sins. I don't have to carry it on my back anymore. I don't have to walk around feeling guilty about the things that I have done because he has forgiven me for what I've done. A lot of us carry the cross that Christ carried for us because we don't forgive ourselves. That is something that I want you to hear today. A lot of us are still carrying the cross that Christ carried for us. A lot of you haven't forgiven yourselves. He forgave you, but you haven't forgiven yourself for the things that you've done. And because of that, it causes you to continue to carry that old nature. He forgave you for what you've done, but you haven't forgiven yourself. That's why you don't smile, because you, you haven't forgiven yourself. That's why you don't know how to love, because you haven't forgiven yourself. You still carrying around this sinful nature that Christ, when you asked him, when you said to him, God, I, I, I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead, okay? And, and, and you said, if I believe that I shall be saved, now I'm saved. And he says, okay, I forgive you but you have to forgive yourself. There comes a time in life when you got to learn how to forgive yourself because he forgave you for all of your sins. Amen? Amen. He says, he forgave us for all of our sins, having canceled the written code with the regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. Amen. What is that saying to us? Amen. He, having canceled the written code, what was the written code? The law. The law. And what did the law do to us? The law would convict us. You know, the law was a bunch of, you know, don't do this, don't do that. And um, Jesus took the law, and, he, and when, he, when he was nailed to the cross, he nailed that law to the cross. Exactly. So, like you said, God, God has forgiven us, but since we haven't forgiven ourselves, it's even hard for us to move on. Yes. You know, and then we bring up, you know, well, God, you know, I'm feeling good, but what about this? And God saying, I don't even know about it. Exactly. It's over. It's you know, over. Because when I forgive you, I forgot about it. Yes. I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. So but that's you, why we have to forgive ourselves. You have to forgive yourself. So sisters and brothers and sisters, so that you can move on. You have to forgive yourself. He paid the price. He paid the price because he knew that you couldn't pay it. If we had to live by the law, let me tell you something, we would have been dead already. So he became the perfect sacrifice for us because he knew that we could not fulfill that law. So he says, I'll die. I'll give my life for them. If he was willing to give his life for you, what are you willing to do for him? Why are you still holding on to what he has given his life for? Why are you still doing what you used to do when Christ has taken you out of darkness and brought you into the marvelous light? Why are you still living in darkness? Why are you still thinking like you're in darkness? Why are you still walking like you're in darkness? You're not in darkness no more. When he gave his life, he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. Amen. I am no longer a child of the darkness. Amen. I am children Amen. of light. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. He said, I nailed it to the cross, the law. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he says, everything that wanted to kill you, everything that wanted to destroy you, all the demons on the earth, demons in the atmosphere, all authorities. He said, when I died and I gave my life, he says, all powers are in my hand. That means through Christ Jesus, 
nothing is impossible. He has cleared the way for me to be a child of light. He has conquered everything that would hinder me from being what God wants me to be. Hallelujah. He did it. You didn't do it. Hallelujah. Joe on the corner didn't do it. Your job didn't do it. Hallelujah. Jesus did it. Amen. And he did it because he loves us. Yes, sir. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whosoever will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Not because of me. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Oh, that I have life and I have it more abundantly. He disarmed the things that wanted to destroy me. Amen. Because if the devil could have, he would have killed me when I was in my mother's womb. Amen. Hallelujah. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 He prepared my way and he opened doors that no man could close. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I disarmed the powers and authority. Yes, sir. He made sir. a public spectacle of them. Yes, sir. Satan thought he had him. Satan thought he had you. Satan, if it was for Satan, he would have killed you. He thought he had you. Yes, sir. He was, he was after you. He was, he was ready to kill you. He even asked Jesus, he said, if you take their heads from around them, I guarantee they'll curse you. God says, no, not so. Hallelujah, Jesus. He disarmed it. And he made a spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you. Now watch Paul now. And right in the midst of teaching, he switches. He says, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or what you drink. Yes, sir. Or with regard to religion festival. Why do you think he says this? Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or what you drink. Why do you think he says this? kind of doesn't make sense. Why would he go from what he was teaching into this. What's the point of it? What is he trying to explain to us? It's not what goes in your body, it's what comes out of your mouth. Okay, you, you, you're hitting it. Okay. Hey, somebody else. Well, also there were, there were like um, restricted foods that, that the law said you can't eat, but I think he's trying to emphasize that, you know, um, foods and, and, and um, like he's talking about new moons and festivals. All of these things are just uh, shadows yes. of Jesus. Yes. So yes. you know Traditions. these are not the important. These are not the important. Jesus is the important. Exactly. Don't don't get caught up into the rituals and tradition, to all these different types of philosophies that we were raised up with from children. We we, we get so distracted by what our for, our forefathers used to do, until we feel that we have to do it, and if we don't do it then you know what? Then God is not going to bless us. So it doesn't become about Christ. It becomes about the traditions of man, not about Jesus Christ. Tell me some of the traditions that you were raised with. Just for a second. Some of the traditions that you guys were raised with. Well, when I was coming up, I couldn't wear pants in the church these days. Didn't I? Okay, okay. It's not about what you wear. You know, it's about the word. But, but for a long time, it was like you were afraid. If you didn't have a dress, you didn't come to church. Why? Because you were told you couldn't wear pants in church. What are some of the other traditions? I can tell you right now, if you change communion from first Sunday to third Sunday, there will be people that will be totally thrown <laughs> off. We're not going to see that. We can't take communion on third Sunday. Exactly. We have to take it on first Sunday. Exactly. You know, stuff like that that... There's no, you know, the Bible says as often as you do this, That's right. remember, you know, do it in remembrance of me. It doesn't matter what Sunday, but because we're so used to taking it first Sunday, yes. you would have changed it, or if it was to be changed, people would be totally thrown off. Exactly. So it no longer becomes Christ, it becomes a tradition. Yes. 
Yes. The one that I grew up with was uh, fish on Friday. <clears throat> we couldn't. Have, we had to have fish on Friday. Fish on Friday. Yeah. Not that it wasn't a Bible, but this is the way you were raised. So you had to have that fish on Friday. Right. People would get upset if you wouldn't eat fish on Fridays, right? What's something else? Yeah? This kid on Sunday, <laughs> they couldn't couldn't go out to play or go to the movies until you go to church or Sunday school first. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's right. And I grew up like that. Yeah. Grandma yeah. said, you can't go out until you uh, go to church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, um, Thunder, we had to turn out the lights and get on our knees and play. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are traditions. Yeah. Well, Easter Sunday, once you put on your uh, Easter clothes and stuff like that, you were on the sweat. You know, so you didn't do, you didn't play anything, but we just had to sit on the stoops and, you know. <laughs> just, just look good, right? Yeah. And, and, and just, just no, 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 we couldn't do nothing, but watch time. No, 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 no. Sit there and. Can you do a little sad? Could do a little sad. You had to look holy, right? You had to look, you had to look the part. Amen. You didn't probably know anything about Christ, but you had to look the part. Yeah, sure. These are traditions that Paul is talking about, man-made traditions. And he's saying to us, he's saying, don't get caught up. Don't let people judge you because you refuse not to follow tradition. Don't let them judge you. And he uses the festivals of what you eat and what you drink on a moon celebration or a Sabbath day. For these are shadows and things that were to come. The reality, however, is not found in Christ. These things are just shadows and types, but these things have nothing to do with Christ at all. For so long, we've been caught up into those things and we did not take the time to know anything about Christ. So many people have left Christianity and went to other religions because no one ever taught them anything about Christ. All of their lives, they followed traditions. And when they became grown, they needed substance in their life. And they had nothing to grab from but tradition. And tradition will not save you. Tradition will not help you deal with the reality of the storms in life. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? So he says, he says the reality, <clears throat> however, is not found, is found in Christ. That's the reality. The reality is Christ, not tradition. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you from the prize. What is he saying here? Now, that's an easy one. Huh? Do not let any, do not let anyone who delights in false humility. What is false humility? Person that doesn't believe in Christ. Or? Person that doesn't humble themselves. Person that doesn't humble themselves. They pretend to be humble, but they're not really humble. They pretend to be Christ-like, but instead they're really not. He says, don't be fooled by this. In the worship of angels uh, disqualify you from the prize. He says, don't, don't allow this false teaching goes back to this again because he wants us to have substance so that you would be able to make it through. He wanted the Colossians people to have it, to be able to stand on a firm foundation. He wanted the Colossian people to know the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves. He wanted them to be so strong in the Lord that it didn't matter what false teachings were around them, that they would know Christ for themselves. Amen. And so he says, do not get caught up in false humility. They look 
like they have Christ. They carry a Bible like they have Christ. They have a cross like they have Christ. They know a couple, they know a couple scriptures, so they sound like they know Christ. But when you live, when you see how they live their life, you don't see Christ <clears throat> in their life. Be careful of people with false, uh, with, with false teachings. Be, be careful of people that worship angels. Be careful. Because there are so many people <clears throat> out there that look like they have Christ in their life, but they don't. <clears throat> He's teaching them not to look at the person, but to look at the Christ in the person. Yes, sir. That's why I started off with you today. <clears throat> don't get caught up into the leader. Make sure you get caught up in who's leading the leader. If you don't see Christ in the leader, then you don't follow the leader. You <coughs> follow him as he or she follows Christ. Amen. 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 Let's go a little further. Can I have somebody to read uh, 19 through 23. What chapter are you in, Pat? Uh, second chapter, Colossians. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rule? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have, these rules which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with us are based on merely human commands and teachings. Keep going. Keep going. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Let, let, let's stop right there. Why do you think Paul is telling them to be careful of these false prophets, to these men and women that are unspiritual but they're, and they're puffed up? Why does he tell them that they've lost connection with the head? Why is he saying this? Because God is the head. Excuse me? Because God is the head. Because God is the head. And we have to know the word of God for ourselves because as we listen to who's teaching or leading us, if we don't see that God is the head of their life, if they're talking about me, 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 what I've accomplished, what I've done, what I have, then you know somewhere along the line they have lost their connection. Because it's never about me. It's always about the Christ in me. Amen? Amen? He says, these leaders are puffed up. They're talking about their accomplishments. They're talking about how big their house is. They're talking about how big their cars are. They're talking about how many planes they have. They have lost all sense of reality. They have lost their connection to the head. And when you have lost your connection to the head, it becomes all about me. Be careful about those me people in your life. Don't get attached to people, places, and things. Some people get so amazed at people because they have a nice car. Some people will escort people to the front of the church because they have a mink coat on. People will be are so praised because they live in a beautiful home. Don't get caught up into people, places, and things. Because people, places, and things cannot put you into the kingdom of God. You have to make sure that whoever you connect with is connected with God. Amen. Amen. 
Don't connect yourself to anybody that's not connected to God. Because if I connect myself to you, that means that I connect my spirit with your spirit. So if I connect my spirit with your spirit and your spirit is not right, then I'm going to take on your spirit. Amen? Amen? I have to make sure whoever I connect myself with is connected to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 So he, he says, he says, be careful. He says, from whom the whole body supported and held together by the ligaments. And, 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 and the reason why he says this is because when we are connected, when, when, when I look at this, I think of me and my wife. Because me and my wife is connected, then what happens is my children are going to connect to each other. Amen. And we're going to have the whole body in the house, yes, right? Yes, yes. It's no longer just me, right? It's me, my wife, and my children. Amen. But if I disconnect myself from my wife, then I'm, there's nobody that's the head inside of the house. And the man has to make sure that he's in his rightful place. Because if he is the head of the house, he has to make sure that he's in his place so that when the enemy comes, he can protect the body. Amen. So we have to make sure that all of the ligaments of the church, all of the ligaments of your family is connected to the head. Because if the ligaments are disconnected, then the body cannot function. Everything has to be connected. Amen. Amen? Amen? You can't have one person over here doing something and somebody over here doing something else. I can't have my wife believing one thing and my children believing another. Thing. And then I'm believing something else. Because then the body cannot function. And if the body doesn't function, then you're going to have schisms. You're going to have division. Amen? Amen? And some of us get so frustrated because of the division in our lives because the body is not connected. If the church is not prospering, it's not prospering because Christ is not in the church. It's not prospering because the body is not connected to that head. Amen? Amen? Amen. Once the body gets connected to the head, then Christ can move in the church. Amen? Amen? Amen. He says, since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why, as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are, uh, uh, these are the despised or things that will perish because they are based on human commands and teachings. Why is Paul saying, do not handle, do not touch, do not taste? Why is he saying that? These are, these are human uh, standards. And he's basically saying that uh, they're going to go away. Like, the, this is something that, like, we... We, these are rules that we that we set in place, not things that are set in place by God. Okay. Anybody else? <coughs> Since you die with Christ to the basic principles of this world. Hallelujah. Since you died, that's the key. I'm just giving you guys the answer. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. You lose your spiritual power. If you touch those things. Since you died, yes. you no longer that person anymore. You, don't, you, you no longer do those things anymore. Right? So just don't touch it. Don't taste it. Right? Don't handle it. Because we die with Christ. Our life has changed to new. We have been new. Exactly. So you can't. So you're not supposed to touch it. You're not supposed to handle it. You're not supposed to taste it. He says because you're not that person anymore. You were, 
You were circumcised. You were changed. You're a new creature in Christ. You're not that, you're not child, uh, children of darkness. So don't touch it. Don't taste it. Don't handle it. You connected to the head. You connected to, to Christ Jesus. Let him deal with it. Don't you taste it. Don't you handle it. Let Jesus deal with it. Amen? Amen. Why are you trying to fix things that you're not supposed to fix? Why are you touching stuff that you know that you shouldn't touch? Because it's not our battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Why are you handling it for? This is more or less a question, though. He's asking, you know, since we died in Christ, why do we still go by these worldly things of don't touch, don't taste? That, that, those are all worldly things. So if we died and we're born again with Christ, then why are we still submitted to worldly rules? So why do we do it? No, I'm just... No, 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 I'm saying, and, and, and the question is, to us, why do we do it? Because we don't have a spiritual fullness. We don't have spiritual fullness because of... Temptation is always there. Temptation is always there. Flesh. Okay, what else? The flesh. What else? Why do we feel we have to handle it? Why do we feel that we have to touch it? She says because of the simple, we're not supposed to because we're not, we're saved, we're set apart. We're new creatures in Christ. We're not supposed to touch those things. When I was in the sinful nature, I touched those things. I handled those things because I was in the sinful nature. I felt I was supposed to do it. They made me feel good. They made me feel better about myself. I felt I was supposed to be there. I thought I was supposed to do those things. I used to love to get high. Why? Because it made me feel good. That's why I touched it. That's why I handled it. But the minute that I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I don't need that to make me feel better about myself. I got a new high, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? So I don't have a desire to touch it or to handle it anymore. Because I have Christ Jesus in my life. Amen? Amen. Anybody have another question on that? Okay. Um, yes, go ahead. Just the last part. It says, um, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Meaning, if you if you feel like you've, if you've died with Christ, but you're still submitting to worldly rules, you're not going to... You're going to always be uh, submissive to the flesh, opposed to Perfect. being connected and staying with the head, because you, you're you still, like, you're half and half. Right. Like, okay, I'm saved, I've been baptized, I go to church, but I can do this for myself, and I can do that for myself, and there's, you know, there's no God, and I'm going to do this, and I can do that. Exactly. And, and that is the, that is the philosophy of human a tradition that he was talking about because a lot of people felt that they could be saved and still do those things. And in tradition, as we know, but don't want to talk about, a lot of us was taught that as long as you go to church and you still do those things, you'll be all right. Now, I don't expect anybody to say amen, but I've been raised up just like you. A lot of us were taught that as long as you go to church, pay your tithes, sing in the choir, I can still go out there and cut a leg. I can still go out there and get my drink on. I can still go out there and get my smoke on. As long as I make sure that on Sunday morning, I got in church and I was singing on the choir and I paid my tithes and I did what I was supposed to do. And we grew up with all of these problems in our lives. And then we look to God and say, God, why? And God said, because I told you not to touch it. I told you not to handle it. But because you were stuck in tradition, now you've got this problem. And now you're going to come to me. But I told you not to touch it. I told you not to handle it. I told you to leave it alone. 
There's something that she said that was so powerful. She used one word that, that, that is so powerful, the word value. When you value your relationship in Christ Jesus, it's the value that I have. It's the respect I have. It's, 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 it's the passion and the love that I have for Jesus Christ that says to me, I ain't touching it. I ain't messing with it because I value my relationship in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. When you value, I love that. When you value your relationship in Christ Jesus, that is the thing that says to me, I want to cuss her out, but I ain't going to do it because I value my relationship in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 He crossed me, but I value my relationship that he, it is not that serious that I'm going to come out of myself Amen. and tell him how I really feel. Amen. I'm going to leave it alone. Amen. And I'm going to give it to the head because yes. yes. I'm connected to him. Amen. And I know if I'm connected to him, the battle is not mine. Amen. Today we know. It's not mine. Amen. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. I'm going to leave it alone. Everything in my life, I'm going to leave it alone and turn it over to the head, which is Christ Jesus, because I'm connected to him. Amen? Amen. Those are the Amen. benefits of being connected to Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody Amen. want to add something? Okay. All right, so let's go down to the uh, third chapter. Can I have somebody to read the first five verses? Watch this, it's going to get a little hot in here. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. We will do the next one. I'm sorry. Bro. Okay. Because? because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Paul set us up, didn't he? <laughs> he, told, he told us why we shouldn't touch it, right? Mm -hmm. So now he defines it more. He says, why you shouldn't touch it? He says, because you, he says, you need to be thinking of things above, <clears throat> not on things on this earth. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. For you died, Hallelujah. and your life is, is not hidden from, from Christ and God. For you die, I am no longer the same. I died with him. He says, if you die with me, yet he says, don't if you suffer with me, yet would you reign with me? I die. I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. He says, Your life is no longer hidden. Your life is no longer hidden. Your life was hidden. Your life. Your life was hidden. Nobody knew who you were because Satan hid you. He hid you because he, he was out to destroy you. But the minute you gave your life to Christ, he said God exposed you. And he, he let the world know that's my child. He sealed you, we learned yesterday. He didn't just seal you, but 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 he 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 put his spirit inside of you. And the minute that he put his spirit inside, it exposed you. And Satan said, I'm putting him on a hit list because he's no longer hit. Now I can see. Thank God that 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 God hit me. And enough time for me to come to my senses so that he can seal me with his blood. Could you imagine 
that when he, if he wouldn't have hit me, Satan would have devoured me. If he wouldn't have hit me, Satan would have killed me because I wasn't covered. Because that's why he hit me, because I wasn't covered. Because I didn't accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior yet. I was boogalooing. I was having a good time. I was partying. I was in the club. So he hit me. Right? I was driving around, going places that I shouldn't have gone. So he hit me. And the minute that I gave my life to Jesus Christ, then he exposed me. And the only reason why he said I can expose you now is because I sealed you with my blood. Now, no weapon formed against you can prosper. But until you came to your senses, I had to hide you. That is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. He says, so put your mind in the right place, guys. Because it's not about you, it's about Christ Jesus. Get your mind right. You are here right now because of the grace and the mercy of God. Get your mind right. Keep your mind on heavenly things, not on earthly things. For you are died. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who, who your life appears, then you will also appear with his glory. Put the death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Now, this right here is the meat of everything. Everybody, if you got a pen, underline this right now. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Kill it before it spreads. Stop the disease before it spreads. You know what diseases that are in your body. You know the things that you think about in the middle of the night. Yes, sir. You know what's roaming through your minds when the word of God is going forth and you need to be focused on the word of God. You know what makes you not come to church on Sunday morning that you become too busy for. You know what you sh how you should be living your life and you're not living your life because of this disease that's in your life. You know what it is. And he says, he put it to death. I don't know, but God says, I know. This scripture right here is like a peekable. It's like, I'm peeking into your life. I know what's there. The rest of the world don't know what's there. And I'm telling you, put it to death before it puts you to death. You better take it and bring it to the altar and let God put it to death before it kills you. Now look, he lists this, a, a list of things that he knows that we're fighting with. And for some of us, the list goes longer. He says, put it to death. Yes, sir. Get your mind right. <clears throat> Get your mind right. Stop fighting with earthly things that Christ has already nailed to the cross. Yes, sir. He has already given you the victory of all of the diseases that are in your life. Why are you fighting what he's already destroyed? Yes, sir. Now, I, I didn't think I was going to get any amens on that. That's something that you go, Amen. Mm. <coughs> he says, you used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. Yes, sir. But now you must rid yourself yes, sir. of all such things. Things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off the old self with its practices 
and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. Amen. Take those things from your lips. Get those things out of your life. Amen. You are not that person anymore. Stop listening to false teachings. Amen. 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 Man, these, well, I don't think I'm going to come back here again. Y'all too quiet. I, don't know. <laughs> I think I'm going to stay on something. Boy, y'all are quiet. This thing is, it make you curl your toes, right? Amen. He said, stop. Put it to death. Yes, sir. Get rid of it. Stop <coughs> allowing this disease to grow in your life. Deacons are taught us that when he died on the cross, he nailed it to the cross. Now I am victorious over all of those things. Yes, sir. That are in my life. Greater is he that is in me. Hallelujah. There is nothing in my life that I can't get through or get over. I can't let go. Yes. Uh, I heard this man say uh, one time, he said, um, I forgot who it was. He said, be killing sin, or sin be killing you. Yes. Uh, when I first became a Christian, like 40 some years ago, this that part about the fornication, I used to read that, and I couldn't believe it. Every time I opened my Bible, it said that same thing about fornication. I was like, Lord, why don't you take this part of the Bible out? You know, because I was into it you know, the fornication, and it's still there. It's still there. Yes. It's still there today. It looks like it's still there. Yes. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon this earth, fornication. It's still there. Yes. And I was like, you need to, like, take that part out because I can't deal with that part. Right. And, I mean, and, and every time I opened it up, it was that same thing about fornication. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so over the years, I mean, through the Holy Spirit, his life in me, it was him in me that hated the fornication. Yes. Yes. Because yes. I was in love with the fornication. Right. <laughs> right. right. So I'm just telling you. That's straight honest, up. Bro. That's honest. That's no, honest. No, no, no. So he was honest. Look, so he just like. Threw me into another realm. He, the Christ in me put me in another realm. Right, right. Like put me in another realm. I, I mean, I wasn't volunteering for that realm. You know what I mean? Right, right. That's where he wanted to take. He want. It seems like he wants to take me somewhere. You know, even yes. today, right. like this life in me wants is taking me somewhere. Okay, mm -hmm. and he and I. So like the man said, he said, be killing sin, or uh, sin be killing you. Yes. So he don't, he say, he ain't saying it, he's saying it because it's destroying me. He was telling me to kill this because it was destroying me. Right. Okay? Right. Even though, you know, I'm in love, was, was in love with it, you know, it still was destroying me. Exactly. So I just wanted to, you know, I mean, but like every time I saw that fornication, I was like, you know, Lord, I don't know about this. I don't know why you're saying this. I don't, I don't know why you're saying it. I ain't understanding this. But over the years, he made me understand. Exactly. And it was destroying me. It was destroying me. And we look at it, brother, as a physical death. But the truth of the matter is, is that as it, when I say physical death, meaning that at some point in life we're going to die. Right. But the truth of the matter, we're dying every day because we refuse to see this. Be we killing sin or sin be killing you. To get rid of it. We, we refuse to get rid of it. So we're constantly dying because we won't let it go. Because tradition has always taught us. So what you do out there is your business. You can keep doing it, as long as you don't bring it into the house of the Lord. Oh, I see. Come to the house of the Lord, praise the Lord, and then go right back out there and do yeah, what I you see. was doing. 
it's okay as long as nobody knows. But that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, no, whatever you're doing out there, get rid of it. Stop it. Okay? Right. Then come to the house of God and praise the Lord because he's giving you the strength to get rid of it. Right. Right. Stop praising God in the house because it's no longer in my life. I remember when it was in me, but right. thank God for Jesus Christ. Now I'm connected. It's no longer in me. Amen. Amen. But, but that's why he's saying, Paul is teaching us, says, be careful with this philosophy. Be careful with these traditions that were taught to us, that's so embedded in our minds. Oh, like, like you're talking about like the one, like that, the one you do, what you do outside of the church, it's get cool, just don't bring it inside the church. Don't just bring it inside the church. Or whatever you do out there, it's okay to do, yeah. as long as you don't do it inside of here. That sounds like a philosophy. And it is a philosophy. Yeah. And this is a tradition that we've been taught. And, 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 and we've been doing it over and over again. Yeah. But everything you do in darkness does come to the light. Amen. And we grew and see, we were kids, right? We became teenagers, and it was okay. Then we got grown, and we start looking at how our lives are all messed up. And then we're looking around and like, how did I get here? But we didn't look at the fact that if we would have got rid of that thing a long time ago, when we became grown-ups, we wouldn't be fighting these things that I could have fought when I was a kid. Yeah, I hear you. Or we become grown-ups and we see it in our children, and then we're like, oh my God, how did my children become like this? But the truth is because of this disease that I had into me, now spreading my children. And we don't understand it spread only because I wouldn't, I wouldn't get rid of it. I hear you. You had your hands up um, Yeah, I'm just going to say where, uh, where verse 10 starts, and it says, And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and the image of its creator. I think basically what it's saying is we're foolish to, to follow all, all those other things. Once we're renewed, we're born again. We're born in knowledge of the spirit. That's where you yes. get that that fullness from. Yes. That 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 wholeness. So. Amen. That's all. That that is that is also and that that's exactly it. When I was a child, I thought like a child. Yes. Right. Yes, sir. And when I came a, a grown up, when I put away childish days, right? right? Right. So I don't think like that anymore. I was a child then. I'm not a child anymore. So I got to get rid of those things because they're killing me. Yes, sir. You have to look at yourself and realize that it's killing you. I look good, but inside I'm dying. How many people you know that looks great, but inside of them they're dying? A lot of us are screaming for help. Lord, help me. I am dying inside. I hear you. Because they will not get rid of those things that God is telling us, that disease that's spreading all over our body. That disease of sinning, of, of lying, of madness, of slander, of filthy language. It's a disease. You gotta get rid of that stuff. He says, he says, get it from your lips. Do not lie to each other. What's the point of it? You ain't you ain't lying to you lie to yourself. You're not hurting me. You're not, you're not fooling me. I always tell people, do not spend the time or waste the time trying to fool me. God already knows who you are. You ain't got to waste your time trying to fool me. God already knows who you are. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Are there any questions, any comments? Yes. To get these things out of the system, how do you get rid of anger, malice? What do you do? You pray. To get the first thing is to realize that you have it. Amen. That's the first step. Amen. Come to the realization that I am an angry person. <laughs> Secondly, I need to go to God and say to God, God, I'm angry. Help me to understand why. And I need you, Lord, to heal me from that. We don't want God to heal us until we ask him to help us understand why. Because when we think of the 10 leopards, the reason why nine of them took their blessing and kept going and never came back to thank Jesus, I guess
guarantee you, at the end of that story, the nine of them were going to eventually come back because they were healed, but they were not delivered. Helping, asking God to help you understand why is therapy in helping you understand what makes me angry so that I can deal with what makes me angry. Instance, it could be a loss of a mother, a loss of a dad. It could be because of a financial status. It could be because of a marriage. It could be because of a friendship. I need to come to terms that that situation is gone. Whatever mistake I made, whatever mistake I played in it, it happened. It's gone. I hear it. Once I come to that realization, then I need to ask God to help me let it go. Take it away. And God will help you take it away. But I have to first understand, first, that I am angry. Why am I angry? Now that I understand, God take it away. Don't ask him to just take it away. You're not understanding why. Because you're always going to come back to, but why am I angry? It's still going to be a void in your life. And you're going to come back to why. And I'll give you an example. When my mother left me for my grandmother to raise me, for 40 years of my life, wanted to understand why. I forgave her, but I kept asking the question for 40 years of my life, why did she do it? Until God touched me one day and helped me to understand why she did it. When she helped me, he helped me understand why, I was able to let it go. And today, I have the greatest relationship with my mother. Because I learned to let it go. I, I don't, I, I don't, I understand why she did it now. And I'm okay. He gave that to me. He helped me understand that it was all my plan from the beginning. For you to become who I had to become, I had to allow you to go through this way. And I said, okay, God, I'm alright with it. And I love her. Because I he finally let it go in my life. But I had to understand why. Whatever the situation, even if it's lying, <coughs> even if it's, why do I lie? God, help me understand, why do I lie? I don't have to lie, why do I do it? I hear you. When he helps me understand, why do I lie? Because maybe because I'm not happy with myself. Maybe I'm, I'm insecure about who I am as a person. Okay? Well, that's, I need to cover up things because I don't want people to see who I really am. So I lie so they don't see me. Now God, help me take it away. Because I don't want to be that person anymore. Make sense? Very good. It's God. And he will take it away. Could I share something? Yes. You know, when I, a couple of years ago, I had to take my three grandkids. And they was two and three and four years old. And I was very angry. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was angry. And the Lord is calling me. One year gave me a book on anger. So I even got angry with her. I said, she never heard of giving me this book. So one, I took the book home, and I didn't read the book right then. Then one day, the Lord led me to the book, and I started reading the book. And it just started unfolding, cleaning me out, you know, and I just thank, praise God, you know, it's, good and sharing things with friends and family members because there's things out there, you know, that if you, and you, you can't be hurt. And I didn't want to pass this over to my kids because I seen the hurt in them. I seen they was hurt and they was angry. Mm -hmm. And they thought that I just had went south and brought them up here. And, and even one of the boys said to me, one of my grandsons said, Mama, you came and got us from my house. And I tried to explain them that I didn't. I didn't want, I already had the oldest boy, which had, you know, she had had up here. 
and he came up here to stay with me. And I tried to explain to them, I didn't want them separated. And I didn't want them to think that I loved it. Spencer better than I loved it them, because I loved it. And I said, and, and it was at, it was something that I had to go through. I went through, God put me through a lot. But I just thank and praise God for the Lord's giving me that book. That book <clears throat> took that anger from me when I started reading it. It really, you know, so we can be angry. Sometimes when things happen out of life, we be angry. But we got to let go of it. Let go of it, you know. We have to let go of it because it will destroy you. It destroyed you, you know. And I just thank God that God that, you know. And I just thank God for the church family at that time of year that put me, that encouraged me to go on because, you know, I could have had a nervous breakdown, you know. Yes. But I did. Yes. God seen me through it, you know. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Through, you know? But uh, coming to the point is when anger and unforgiveness, in, are those two areas connected uh, in terms of if you are dealing, for example, with your spouse, um, something that she did, and I'm trying to change that, and she, she keeps on doing it, she keeps on lying, keeps on doing whatever, that makes me more angry. How do I let go? How do I forgive? Well, first of all, y'all, you guys, you and your wife, for example, are not on the same page with God if she's doing something, the same thing that you've expressed your feelings, you've talked about, and she's continuing to lie, because right, those are sins. Everything that, for example, that your wife would be doing, those are all sins. So that just goes back into the word where maybe you're connected to the head, and she's not. So if you are both not connected, that's where the separation comes in. Right, and, and that's a very good. That's a very, very good point because the thing is, is that you're asking her to do something that you know how to do, but she may not. So the first step is to introduce her to Christ. Yeah, that's that's the first step is to introduce her to Christ because here here is the thing is that you can't expect alcoholic to come to go and get help unless they realize they have a problem. So until she comes to the realization that she has a problem, she's not going to, she's going to keep doing it. Because in her, her eyes say, you forgive her because you, you're connected to the head, like she said, which is excellent. Um, but what she doesn't, because of the simple fact is, is that she's not connected. And so you become frustrated because you're looking for her to give you a response that she can't give you. Because you and her have a different relationship with God. So the first step is introduce her to God first. And when she gets introduced to God and she gives her life to him, then you guys are going to go to the same person to get the same results. It's like the false humility as it's mentioned here, where they pretend as if they are godly or holy. Yes. But it's something else on the other side. Only the person who lives with that person will know. Yes. It is difficult for the eyes of everybody in the congregation. Right. Oh, what a beautiful woman. Oh, nice. Uh, Come right to me, brother. Yes. I'm sorry. So that's, that's what I'm referring to, basically, how to deal with people like that in false humility and, and things like that. So that causes a rift of brokenness in relationships and marriages and things like that because of these things. I know I was renewed from the old selves to the new. But my, I still have weaknesses of thoughts running around in my mind to deal with, to let go, whatever happened in the past. Those are the things that I'm trying to realize, to correct myself. But dealing with a person is making it worse for me. I can get out of it, let go of it either. So those are the things that I struggle, for example. Well, brother, let me just tell you something. Don't beat on yourself so hard because watch this. When I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, right? That means I take off, I'm saying, I'm taking off the old, put on the new, right? So now I got a new man, right? right. But my mind right. is still being renewed. Yes, sir. Don't, that's a daily thing. Yes, sir. Just because I have on a new nature, that doesn't mean that my mind is 100% new. My mind is being renewed 
daily. So I'm still going to have some struggles in my life, but because I have him a new nature, he's renewing my mind every single day. Amen. So things that I, I, I yeah, I'm going to think some things, but I'm not going to react to what I think because I have him a new nature. You see what I'm saying? Right. So don't, 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 be, don't beat up on yourself. Just make sure you keep on the new nature. As long as you keep on the new nature, it'll change your mind. Yes, sir. But the minute you take off that nature, then what's going to happen is you're going to be real angry, and then you're going to react to everything, and then you're going to be violent because you took off the, the new nature. You see? So don't just understand. Every single day, God is renewing our mind. Every single day, we pray. The, the Bible says, Morning by morning, brand new mercies I see. He's constantly working on Amen. us day Amen. after Amen. day after day. Hallelujah. Don't think because you're saved that you're perfect. Mm -hmm. He's still working on us. Keep on that. When I got on the new nature, I'm going to pray. When I go on the new nature, I know when I have a situation, I'm going to go to the head because I got the new nature on. With the armor of God. I take it off, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Then the devil's going to come at me because he can see me, he can attack me. Yes. You're fighting the principalities of darkness, not the human. Yes. Amen. Yes. Go ahead, brother, I'm going to let you go, okay? Go ahead, brother. Uh, I, I, you know, it, my experience is that um, anger will just like completely destroy your testimony. Because there are some people in my life, deep before Christ, that there's no way I can tell them about Christ. Because they see how temperamental and angry I was before Christ. Right. That I, there's no way they would believe anything I said. Before Christ? Before Christ. Okay. They wouldn't believe anything I said because they saw my anger. Mm -hmm. So in my experience, anger destroys your ter testimony. Yes. Once somebody see you explode or go out of your go out of your new nature, you know what I mean? 100 percent And you're gonna like come back next week and try to tell them about the love of Christ. Well see when you do it, that you cause a person to fall too. Yeah, right. I'm just saying that's you know that's yeah like my sister saying that that's what it does. It's right. one of the things that anger does. It destroys. You can't testify about the goodness of God when somebody see you explode and out of control and self. You know you know what I mean. Right. Because in my experience, the people before Christ ain't hearing nothing. I got to say. Because they seen, they seen what the, I mean, come out of it, which it was, that was me, that was my old nature, you know. Right. Now, I can't hardly tell them about a new nature. I'm just saying that's happened in my experience. Okay. Right. So, I'm like, what, I, I, I do what you say, though. I'm not going to, like, wallow down in it. What's done is done. I just move on with the new nature. I just live in the new nature now. And, and pray to God that it don't happen again. That he could, because he could control your anger. Because one of the scriptures that controlled my anger, he told me it, it was like an audible voice. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Right. Okay? Right. Right. So you ain't got to get angry at nobody. He'll take care of, of you know, a lot of times we get angry because people do stuff to us. And right. then we want to do stuff to them. A little bit higher, a little bit more than they did to us. Like you do this to me, and then I'll do something, you know, to you. Well, he told me business was his, that it belonged to him, that he would repay. Right. So I'm not going around trying to, you know, you no know, trying to be angry at nobody when it's just totally unnecessary. Right. And you know, I'm, okay, that's it. No, 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 that's why I said before you go. I'm sorry. I just wanted for you. Sir, and for you, I just thought of a, um, a scripture that my mom keeps on the, 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 the kitchen, the refrigerator. 
it's in Proverbs. I'm not sure what the exact verse is. Maybe you can help me. But it says, a fool gives full vent to his anger. Yes, but sir. But a wise That's right. man That's right. keeps himself under control. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Basically being wise in God's word. Yes. Thanks, God. Amen. 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 Go ahead, sister. Well, I was just going to say, um, in this um, situation, instead of getting angry, you turn it over to God. And once you turn it over to God, you don't take it back. Hello. You let God handle it. Amen. Amen. I receive that. And, 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 uh, yes, sir. And then, too, he's much stronger than his wife. So yeah. you have to pray for her. Yeah. And uh, maybe she will take that lying out of her mouth yeah. if you pray and stay uh, faster than the Lord. Amen. Don't get upset with her. You don't get upset. And, and you know, you think that you can't change her. Right. You can't change it. But you can keep on doing good things, living like God wants you to live. She gonna vicious see it. It may, it may take a while, but she'll see it. Especially when you're a part. Yeah. Yeah. Living 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 God, 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 you God, 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 God. No. Eventually he'll bring you all oh, together. Okay. He'll bring you back together. He pray and ask forgiveness of us. Amen. 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 This is awesome. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen.